Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we have a very exciting video for you because today we are getting our first look at AMD's second generation Ryzen Threadripper CPUs along with official pricing and release date info. Before all that, this video has been sponsored by Deepcool. Deepcool's new Castle all-in-one liquid cooler provides performance to match its unique looks. The Waterblock's large copper base offers full TR4 coverage for AMD's massive Threadripper CPUs, and as we found out recently, it's more than capable of tackling the Ryzen 7 2700. And yet, despite all this, Deepcool are offering the 240mm version at an MSRP of just $110 US. Okay, so let's get down to business. Uh, before we get to the exciting unboxing portion of the video, let's just go over some official information of the stuff that we're allowed to release at this point in time. Without beating around the bush, there will be four second generation Threadripper CPUs, the most expensive of which will be the $1,800 US WX Series TR2990WX, and that is a 32 core, 64 thread beast that AMD says is designed for creators and innovators. The 32 cores will operate at a base frequency of 3 GHz with a boost frequency of 4.2 GHz. For now, that's all the clock speed info we have. So yeah, can't release any more of that until the review. Uh, also in the WX series, we have the 2970X for $1,300 US, and that one packs 24 cores and 48 threads, and it will have the same operating frequencies as Bigger Brother. Then, as part of the X series, we have the 2950X, and like the 1950X, it's a 16 core, 32 thread part, and it will become available at $900 US. So, $100 US less than what we got the 1950X for, and that one will pack a 4.4 GHz boost frequency with a 3.5 GHz base. Then finally, we have the baby of the family, the measly 12 core, 24 thread CPU known as the 2920X, for just $650 US. Uh, it's pretty incredible what AMD has done when we consider that a 12 core CPU is the low end base model. But that is the situation we're currently faced with. And it means that for that price from Intel, you're getting, I think it's the Core i7-7820X and that's just an eight core CPU. So certainly some progress has been made. The 2920X uh, will operate at 3.5 gigahertz for the base and it will boost as high as 4.3 gigahertz. As for availability, well, you can pre-order the flagship part, the 2990WX today, but as always, we would urge you not to. AMD's gonna hate us for saying that because that's kind of the point of these staggered announcements as to create hype and generate sales in the form of pre-orders. But as always, I'm going to suggest that you wait for our review and the review of other media outlets before parting with your money. Although you can pre-order now, the 2990WX won't be available till August 13th, so whether you pre-order now or just wait a week and buy it, then you're pretty much gonna get your, your grubby mitts on it at the same time. I doubt they're going to sell out and it'll be months before you can get one. Very unlikely that. Then on the 31st of August, the 2950X will be available and the release of the 24 core and 12 core models won't happen till sometime in October, AMD says. Okay, with all that important information out of the way, I think it's time to have a bit of fun and see what AMD has sent us. I gave our patron members a bit of a tease and showed them these two boxes a few days ago. I've had these sitting in the studio for about a week now, well, almost a week, and I have been dying to unbox them, but I swear I haven't even had a peek. AMD's given me a bit of a hint at what's in here. We've got some motherboards, some memory and all that sort of stuff, and of course the new second generation Threadripper CPUs. Why am I delaying this? Let's just get into it. Actually, I'm going to start with the other box because I think, I think that is some extra stuff. I think the smaller box has the actual Threadripper kit in it. Anyway, we'll find out. Certainly very heavy. So I'm pretty sure this box here has a Threadripper review kit. But we'll, uh, we'll know in a moment. Okay, it looks like it's bubble wrap, so probably not the most exciting Yep, I can't get that out. All right, we'll um, tip it out. Ooh, very nice. It's looking very special indeed. It's a, uh, it's Threadripper Massive, the packaging. So looks like we lift this up. Yep, it's coming. It's kind of coming. 
I don't know. If, oh, yep, I did that right. Okay. Let's do it. All right, here we go. I think this is the final unveiling. Wow, it looks mighty impressive from the back here. Is that seriously brushed aluminium? Well, I just got my grubby fingerprints on it, so I'd say it is. Okay. <laughs> that looks pretty special. We've got a couple of memory modules there. There's some more stuff under this foam. Okay, a little black box here. And then it's just foam is left in the bottom there. So we'll uh, put that down out of the way for a moment. Uh, we'll have a look at this first because so we've got two sheets of brushed aluminium on the front here. And it looks like we pull these tabs, possibly. It's got arrows suggesting that they come out. Okay, I managed to get one off. That didn't come without a bit of a fight. Okay, I got the other one. I think we're in business now. So perhaps this lifts off. You're going to see what is behind here before I do. So there we go. What are we looking at? Ooh, the, th the official Threadripper packaging. Well, that looks pretty fancy. And in there we do have the 2990WX processor. Uh, pretty awesome. Can we pop this? Can we get it out? We can indeed get it out. It just lifts out. So we'll put this down this way and we'll try and wriggle it out. Okay, we did it. Phew. Alrighty, well I'll move that frame. I went and got my magic wand. How does that look? Does that look good? I'll assume it looks pretty cool. Anyway, enough of that. Okay. I suppose the goal here is to open this while doing the least amount of damage possible. Where did I put my knife? There it is, I've got it. You can all stop looking. Okay. There is a pull here, or rip here, so I suppose we'll do, it looks like it'll uh, tear that. Ah, uh, we'll just do it the way you meant to do it. Okay, so we have a little tab on top. I am going, okay, you push that. I was thought you might pull it, but it just pushes forward, and it looks like that lifts up like that. Very difficult to do this while showing the camera. And do we just reach in and grab that out? Is that how this works? That is indeed how that works. So that's kind of cool. It's very, uh, you guys will remember the last packaging where you could turn the thing and you had the circular thing. Well, now it's a rectangular thing. Pretty cool. In the bottom here, we no doubt have our tools and whatnot to install the CPU. I'll try and get, yep, there we go. So that comes out. Okay, so the rest, that's just empty packaging now. We have this little box here, and this will no doubt have a Torx screw in it. Or a Torx driver. So we got that little guy. And then we have this little bracket here that supports a lot of the water blocks. And then you get a nice little, or it's actually quite large, uh, Ryzen Threadripper sticker. It's got the old Threadripper design on it, but that's fine. Actually, most of the packaging does. So I'm not actually sure if they're going with the New, have you seen the new Threadripper? Tim got a t-shirt with it. Anyway, uh, so yeah, that's what's in there. We have the CPU. The packaging's now empty. Actually, I'll just put all this away quickly. So we have the CPU here. I'll probably, well, I'll definitely include some B-roll of it. But uh, yeah, similar sort of looking deal to last time. Very similar, in fact. Uh, I will take it out of the little orange caddy. I realize you need that to install it, but I'm going to take it out because it looks like garbage and my B-roll looks a lot better with the CPU taken out of it. So for anyone who's going to get triggered that I've taken it out of there, I suggest you don't take it out of this if you're buying it to put it in your own system and be very careful with it because it is very much required. But for B-roll to show off on my YouTube channel, I would like to take it out. So I hope we're clear on that one. Okay, let's see what's in this box because that was a very large package just for a CPU. It is a very large CPU, so there is that. Ah, excellent. I know what this is already. I've seen that. 
And this is the Wraith Ripper. If I can get it out. And this is an equally large air cooler to go with the equally massive CPU. So for those of you who aren't familiar with this gigantic air cooler, uh, I, it's not going to be included with the uh, Threadripper CPUs by default. So it's not a box cooler, though it's kind of like the official air cooler for Threadripper, I suppose. It's made in collaboration with Cooler Master, who often makes the coolers for AMD. And I'm glad I didn't touch the bottom there because that is a pre-applied tim. And yep, it's sticky as you would expect. So anyway, I'll try not to destroy that because I would like to test the standard tim on it at least once. So anyway, that is the uh, Wraith Ripper cooler and it is just absolutely massive, anodized black, big huge copper base, heaps of copper pipes. And I'm really keen to see how well that works on the 2990WX and how far you can overclock it with this massive air cooler. Yeah, very heavy. It uh, has some nice RGB effects on the top. These uh, sort of clear strips here, these translucent strips, they light up and provide some cool effects. So anyway, I'll probably provide some B-roll of this in action for this video, just so you get a good idea if you missed uh, Computex coverage. I'm gonna sit that guy right there. Then finally, AMD has also provided two of the G-Skill Flare X memory kits. And we've used these before with Ryzen. They work extremely well. This is the DDR4 3200CL14 stuff. Uh, they are eight gigabyte sticks. So we have 32 gigabytes in total. So that's gonna be nice. That's what I'm currently running in my 1950X system. I've got the Trident Z stuff, but uh, it's 3200CL14. Very, very similar. Okay, well that's box one down and that was very exciting indeed. I wanna just go benchmark right now, but to do that, well, I don't need new motherboards, but I would like some new motherboards designed with the 32 core Threadripper CPU in mind. And I think we have at least one board designed with that CPU in mind. So let's have a look. Quite a lot of stuff in this box. I'm actually gonna put it on the ground and I'll lift it all out because oh, it's very heavy. So we have the Enemax Liquitec 2, is it the 2, what is it, the 240? I have the 280 in my system. A few people have said that they had problems with the 240 model. My 280 has been absolutely brilliant. I love it. I've been using it for almost a year now. Keeps my 1950X very cool. Uh, it's quiet. So yeah, hopefully no issues with this one, but I'll give it a, a go. Um, a few guys, a few uh, patron members said they've had problems with the 240 model. So. Yeah, not sure what's going on with that, but anyway, I'll give that a go and hopefully it's as good as my 280. Then we have the ROG Zenith Extreme Cooling Kit, and I believe these are active coolers for the Zenith Extreme motherboard, which would make sense because we have that motherboard again. And I'll just put that box there. I'll have a quick look. Okay, so you've got like a, what looks to be a 40 millimeter fan and that will clip onto the VRM heat sinks and provide a bit of extra active cooling. Another one of those, so yeah, I'll give that a go and I'll report back on what sort of thermal numbers I see, or thermal performance. The motherboard that I am most interested in is this one. Again, we saw this for the first time at Computex and They've left Meg in the name, so that's a little bit upsetting. So it is the MSI Meg X399 Creation. X399 Creation, in my opinion, would have been significantly better, but whatever, we've got Meg now. Anyway, the name itself isn't super important and it doesn't have gaming in the name, so that's a, a huge improvement anyway. It's not the, uh, the X399 Meg Gaming or something like that. Because, well, these motherboards or the CPUs, they're not designed for gamers, they're designed for workstations, productivity, creators. So, creation makes a lot more sense than gaming, that's for sure. Extremely heavy motherboard, this one. I won't rattle off all the specs for this. We sort of did that in our Computex coverage, and I will cover it again in detail on a future video. But it just has a whopping great VRM, and this thing should have no problem overclocking the 32 core Threadripper CPU to the max. And 
I think, anyway, it's a fantastic looking motherboard. I know there were opinions varied on our Computex coverage, the sort of smashed glass kind of theme. I thought it was really cool. Some of you did, some of you didn't. That's usually how, how these things go. But anyway, I think you can all agree that it's a pretty epic X399 motherboard uh, in any case. And then finally, the last thing in our box here is another Ryzen CPU, and it is the 2950X. So that is the 16 core model. So we have the 16 and 32 core models to try out, though you could probably simulate the 24 core model uh, and even the 12 core model with the 32 core processor. So maybe that is something that I'll do for our day one coverage. Let me know if you guys are interested in seeing just a little bit of testing with 24 and 12 cores enabled if that's an option via the motherboards using a down core feature it should be anyway I'll, I'll look into that but i don't think we need to go and unbox this again because you've seen the process once i don't think we need to do it twice but we do have the 32 core and 16 core cpus ready for our day one coverage which will be in a week's time so i think that is going to do it for this episode of unboxing second generation threadripper hope you guys enjoyed it uh, plenty of benchmarking for me to do now. I want to provide our usual in-depth coverage. It'll be at least a 20 minute video covering a lot of stuff. And then there'll be multiple videos uh, following up, probably looking at the motherboards in depth, VRM sort of temperatures, overclocking. We'll cover a little bit on the day one coverage, but we'll do some uh, more advanced overclocking down the track. We'll look at memory and all that sort of stuff. And yeah, it should be a lot of fun. They'll also do some air cooler testing, some liquid cooler testing. There is going to be boatloads of work for me to do, so I'm looking very forward to that. Oh, and I could also do uh, a build video, probably the day before we actually release the benchmark, so I could put the, the Meg in a cool looking case. So if that's something you guys want to see, let me know about that in the comment section below and I can make a build happen. But yeah, I think that is going to do it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. You're excited about the information on pricing and availability, but don't wait till you see our review and the reviews of others before you order because that's just a wiser approach but yeah thanks for watching i'm your host steve and i'll see you again next time